analysis of condition of growth plates. Dear colleagues, good day. I'd like to uh, provide the results of the practical work conducted in our clinic, and it helps the conservative treatment of scoliosis uh, uh, patients and uh, patients with uh, problems of lower uh, limbs. Ultrasound method of study uh, is uh, a success for decades in orthopedy, and it uh, enables us to uh, visualize uh, the cartilages and bones. We use it for limbs and uh, uh, spine. Our experience uh, proves that it's reasonable to use the ultrasonography uh, for diagnosis uh, of uh, muscles of uh, children with scoliosis and uh, tubular uh, bones of, uh, for children with uh, uh, limbs of um, a different uh, length. It is not invasive, very informative, very available, and it doesn't need special preparation for the uh, study. And there's a possibility of multiple studies. Uh, this is the device we are using. It's called Aloka, and uh, it has sensors of different kinds, both sectoral and linear. And now about uh, the uh, muscular iliopsis. Uh, this muscle is very important for stabilization of the thoracal lumbar part of the spine. It's a double uh, muscle. I'm sure you know about its uh, parameters. And yet Mr. Israel Korn, uh, our famous uh, professor in uh, 1950s in his uh, thesis on efficacy of um, uh, this uh, iliopsis muscle pointed uh, that it's very important at uh, deformations of uh, uh, the spine. He analyzed over 40 patients with scoliosis at the moment of tension of iliopsis. And uh, if there's traction, force used uh, on this um, uh, muscle, uh, we can uh, make detortion of um, vertebrae, and uh, the angle is, uh, of scoliosis is small. It may also be used as an integral rotator. So we uh, used uh, the exercises for this um, uh, muscle. The exercises were developed by uh, professor, and they were used in many centers, including our centers. Um, uh, uh, thus, we need to preliminary evaluate uh, musculus iliopsos um, if we treat uh, children with classical scoliosis. Uh, the best method uh, is ultrasound examination. It's better than X-ray. It's informative enough, and it's as informative as the X-ray. Moreover, it enables to um, see not only the width of the muscle, but its structure as well. So we've done uh, that uh, study for 47 children with uh, different uh, kinds of scoliosis. Among them, 24 uh, children had left-sided thoracal lumbar scoliosis, 15 had right-sided scoliosis, and 8 had S-shaped scoliosis. Um, assessment was made according to two parameters, the width in centimeters and the density of the uh, muscles via ehagogenicity. Uh, with the same aloca um, device 5 MHz frequency. Uh, the minimum width of iliopsis muscle was detected on the convex side of scoliosis, and it was combined with seal muscle tissue. Respectively, on the concave side, the muscle was widened. In 37 percent of cases, there were uh, no modifications of the muscles, and that was the right-sided thoracal scoliosis diagnosis. Thus, um, it's uh, feasible to use ultrasound diagnostics for comprehensive assessment of the growing uh, plate of um, limbs and uh, scoliosis. Now, the, uh, the different size legs. Well, the assessment of anatomical uh, special features is made with x-rays uh, so far. X-ray, MRI, um, uh, CT scan. And uh, the most important um, parameter is assessed uh, with CT scan only, scintigraphy. And this method is not very uh, 
popular, uh, but um, it's uh, necessary for children with problems of uh, growth plates. Uh, we've studied the opportunities of ultrasound uh, diagnosis uh, for the uh, study of the same uh, problem. We've studied the group of eight patients aged uh, from four months to ten uh, years. The diagnosis was different lengths of legs. They were all in uh, our hospital in Alganyok and they were receiving comprehensive conservative treatment. Um, well, there were 28 patients. 13 had shortening of the left uh, le uh, leg and 15 the opposite. And uh, we've studied the meta meta uh, zones of the distal uh, proximal tibial bones uh, and uh, of the distal femur. And uh, uh, these zones provide up to 70% of the growth of the lower limb. And uh, such uh, methods as uh, X-ray and scintigraphy uh, were used uh, before due to the different lengths of uh, legs. It's polyosological condition due to some inborn and acquired reasons. All the diagnosis was done uh, individually um, on uh, medical indications. Uh, we've um, studied the uh, growth plate with uh, heterogeneous uh, plates uh, and uh, sizes varied of the height of the growth plate from one to three millimeters depending on the age. I hope we proved the same uh, when we've studied patients with uh, um, a uh, different uh, growth plate uh, height, uh, X-ray uh, proved the same results, and so did the ultrasound uh, study. When the growth uh, plate had similar or same parameters, the difference was not detected using ultrasound method. We did radionuclide synthography of the skeleton and discovered a symmetry from 15 to 25 percent in the growth plate area. These modifications were uh, noticed by ultrasound method as well. Uh, Non-homogeneity was um, also detected of the growth plate. Received data may say that ultrasound study of the growth plates of limbs enable us to get the following uh, information. The size of the growth uh, uh, plate, its uh, uh, structure and its functional activity. Uh, so the feasibility is obvious. It's an inexpensive and very um, informative uh, method of study. So I believe it may be used for treatment and investigation of scoliosis and lower limbs disorders. Thank you very much for your attention. Any questions to the speaker? Uh, dear doctor, uh, the uh, data was very interesting. Your work deserves great attention. It's very actual and uh, the topic is very interesting and important. Let me give you some recommendations. I am from uh, the Department of Radiation from uh, of the uh, Medical Institute of Russia and we do this uh, ultrasound diagnosis of um, locomotor system of children for many years. If your data will be added with the data of uh, Dopplerography, uh, the energy Dopplerography, it may show uh, small uh, flows uh, that uh, are uh, linear and they depend on the trophic uh, processes. Uh, this will enable us to tell the uh, difference between uh, the growth rate that went slow, but now the exchange processes are as good as on the good side, or say the new difference went to the right, the process
process is active, and on the left something is um, in the way, or vice versa, something um, initiates the process. So if you add the Doppler sonography, that's going to be quite unique data. My congratulations. Uh, it's a good uh, perspective. Uh, uh, this is my dream. Yes, uh, we're dreaming to do that as well. More questions, please? Thank you. If I worked in such a great center, I would uh, uh, pay uh, a bit more attention to the uh, different uh, uh, size of studying of muscles, and I would uh, also uh, pay attention to the quadruple uh, muscle because that other muscle is also very important uh, uh, for scoliosis treatment. Thank you very much for uh, your remark. Um, there are no more questions, so let me give a brief uh, uh, summary. I believe Dr. Ripko uh, demonstrated that the old ultrasound study um, is not a new method, but when the old method is used for new things, it's getting new opportunities, um, and uh, it's uh, just a beneficiary. And uh, uh, let us congratulate this uh, uh, young doctor. And uh, uh, thank you for the remark about the quadruple muscle. Let us 